Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to hear another exciting weather episode on the podcast called Weather with Enthusiasm. I'm the podcaster, weather enthusiast, Simcha Levin. Yes! You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. While the U.S. has seen very impressive heat for much of the summer, including the mid-Atlantic area, such as Baltimore, South Plains, even other portions of the plains as well, desert southwest, portions of the Midwest, the South Central states, big time, a huge cool down, unusual cool down is expected for today, lasting for the next couple of days before temperatures start to moderate again. In fact, we have places here in the Midwest where afternoon highs are only going to be in the mid-60s today. Really a full force. Canadian cold front. There are some social meteorologists calling this an Arctic blast, but uh, you know, it's it just doesn't sound so on par with what it is because you know temperatures are still in the 60s and 70s. No snowfall with this, to my knowledge. But the West Coast also is seeing a very big cool down for the time being. Portions of the Northwest will be seeing a cool down, but temperatures are going to heat right back up again. Elsewhere in the world, we have really intense heat occurring in Israel right now. Temperatures are well above normal. We even have extreme heat warnings. Warnings for excessive heat are in effect for portions by the Dead Sea, but also Tel Aviv. Now, the main story over there really is just the temperatures around 90 degrees with dew points in the mid-70s. Nothing really that unusual, but we could see a heat index of about 105 degrees in some locations off the Mediterranean Sea where water temperatures are 86 degrees. Nothing too high. Here's the big story right now. It's not turning into a big story, but in weather it is, is the drop in ocean water temperatures, a really significant drop in ocean water temperatures occurring over parts of the Atlantic Ocean. That might reduce hurricanes during the season. It might suppress some development of hurricanes, but meteorologists are not sure about that because it could be that uh, this drop in water temperatures is short-lived and it could be temperatures will rise right back up again. This drop was an unexpected drop. We do have ocean water temperatures, however, approaching 90 degrees over Galveston, Texas, well above (laughs) over there. Normal probably about 86 degrees. I don't know why only 86 degrees 90 sounds like it makes more sense water temperatures widespread 95 degrees according to the windy.com app according to for the united for portions of the united arab emirates along the persian gulf but if you look at some of the other uh, sources for water temperatures you'll see 94 degrees 92 to 94 degrees in that part of the region scorching heat across portions of the Persian Gulf without a doubt we have wet bulb temperatures in portions of the southwestern areas of the Persian Gulf approaching 90 degrees wet bulb globe temperature 92 degrees that's with the sunshine and the light winds Caspian Sea has widespread water temperatures between 80 and 83 degrees or so. But that's for some reason it's not producing significant rise in dew points on the coast as it would here in the US. I have no explanation for that really. Dew points are a little bit higher. Dew points rising into the 60s in some locations only along the immediate coast but we're not seeing anything like dew points of 70s for the most part. There are a few isolated portions where dew points are on the 70s. Windy.com continues to show lake water temperatures over Lake Erie exactly the same now as it was two months ago. Very strange stuff with lake water temperatures in the low to mid 70s. That's something which one has to strongly question as to why it would be like that. Maybe the windy.com is not accurate or maybe there's some other reason why those water temperatures have dropped such as heavy rain. You know, it's considered a one in 1,000 year flood event for the Northeast as 
well, well, eight to twelve inches of rain accumulated within a, I believe it was a twelve-hour period uh, for portions of the Northeast. People could look more into that, and I'm sure it's all over the news everywhere. We have excessive heat warnings in effect today over Texas, South Central Texas. The heat has become suppressed in Oklahoma, but Southern Oklahoma is full force heat over there. As temperatures temperatures over portions of Southern Oklahoma, one hundred and eight degrees over the next couple of days. That's going to be the temperature. That's Oklahoma, 108 degrees. The rest of the state cools off somewhat. We have heat index also between 105 and 108 degrees. Excessive heat warnings going up to heat index of about 110 to 115 over portions of south central Texas. That's for today. We also have an excessive heat warning in effect for Phoenix, Arizona, but it is an isolated area, just the Phoenix metropolitan area. Temperatures going up to 108 to 112 degrees. When you go outside of Phoenix, the excessive heat warnings tend to be dropped. That's the story over there. Uh, we're going to mention a couple other things. Just one thing that's crucial, crucial, is the heat wave that occurred in the Arctic one August 5th through August 9th earlier this year. 97 degrees in the Arctic Mamish. Little Chicago was the name of the city. It's around possibly 70 degrees north latitude. Uh, but at least the Arctic, though, 66 and a third degrees north latitude or further north than that. A couple cities just south of the Arctic Circle, not quite the Arctic, not even hotter than that. Norman Wells, along with another city, 98 and 99 degrees. When you head into Alaska, you have Fort Yukon, Alaska, is the city which the Washington Post tells us is the most impacted city from greenhouse gases in the world, according to the Washington Post. High temperature over there in the mid-80s. Fairbanks, Alaska, also the mid-80s, but when you head all the way up north to Dead Horse, Alaska, right on a map, it shows it right along the Arctic coast. That's what it is on a map. Uh, you know, whether the weather station is actually there or not, I, I have no idea, but temperature hit 89 degrees. That's a record. That's a record. That, last year, August, they the hottest August temperature ever was reported there of 84 degrees, so we beat that by 5 degrees, 89 degrees. As some experts point out, what makes the heat most significant is a couple things. The main thing, according to experts, is the fact that it's occurring so late in the season where solar insulation is 15% less this month than it was last month for the Arctic areas. But another thing to point out is that little Chicago, that 97 degrees Fahrenheit, first of all, that's 36 degrees Celsius. That's the hottest temperature ever recorded in the Canadian Arctic. Okay. That's what we have. We have other places which we spoke about actually even before it happened. In Inuvik, Canada, that's the Arctic. High temperature hit 95 degrees. One of the things that was going uh, <laughs> a variable that increased the chances of this heat happening was the relatively warmer overnight lows where temperatures only dropped to 67 to 71 degrees. Now, us living in the U.S., that doesn't really sound so warm, but that's a record for Alaska. There's never been such a warm night. That city that hit 71 degrees and in Inuvik, temperature dropped to 67 degrees. That 67 degrees is actually warmer than what the normal high temperatures are this time of the year. The reason for the warmer temperatures, well, I would think, you know, it's a 30 degree drop from the daytime high, so that's a significant drop. But meteorologists tell us actually the strong south winds. If it wasn't, it's the it's the strength of the winds. Not really so much of the from the south. It's the strength of the winds, and I'll tell you why. It's because when you have clear skies, calm winds, that's a recipe for brutal radiational cooling. If you should have snow cover, that increases it even more, and fresh snow cover increases it even more. But even without that, clear skies, calm conditions, we would probably have seen an increase of 10 degree drop in those temperatures, probably more like 57 and 61. But the fact that the winds were moving, that prevented the radiational cooling. It's not so much the winds are from the south, it's the fact that it was windy. That's what it is, the fact that it was windy. Here in the U.S., it's a little bit different. The major, the main contributor to overnight, warm overnight lows is humidity. In the summertime, is humidity. And in the wintertime, 
The main question as to whether we're going to see record cold or not is that we can get clear, calm skies at night with a fresh snow cover. Uh, that's when temperatures really start to take a tremendous dip. So the biggest chiddush over here, the biggest shakaru actually is the unexpected drop in ocean water temperatures over parts of the Atlantic, but realize there's other portions which the water temperatures remain really high, such as right outside Galveston, Texas. And I just to go back to Israel for just a moment, we have temperatures hot and humid over in Tel Aviv as usual, but we do have that ex- excessive heat warnings in effect. It, that's It's called extreme heat warnings in effect. Maybe they're in effect all summer. I don't know. But when you head over to the Dead Sea, areas like there, you use the windy.com to look at the ocean water temperatures. You'll see 91 degrees by En Gedi, 95 degrees, a widespread 95 degrees when you go further south than that. So uh, now that's according to the windy.com. Usually, we'll see isolated spots of even higher ocean water temperatures. Around the Caspian Sea, heat, very significant heat, temperatures in the mid-90s for Astrakhan, mid-90s for the next several days, lots of 90s. It seems so far north for those of us living in the south, but that's in Russia. Temperatures are get really hot over there in the summertime. Actually, the normal July high over there is 91 degrees for Astrakhan. Uh, you know, the, as usual, we have in portions of northwest India, Really high dew points and really intense heat indices along with high wet bulb temperatures and wet bulb globe temperatures as well. The highest I was able to find today was a heat index of 136 degrees expected to happen over just outside the United Arab Emirates and other areas along the Persian Gulf Coast over there, along with a wet bulb globe temperature of 92 degrees expected this afternoon. That's going on the upper limit of human survival once again, and it could very well be. There might be other places which might even see higher conditions than that. We've seen it go up to 34 degrees Celsius this past summer, 93 degrees Fahrenheit. We've seen that. I have not found 95, which is the official unbearable for humans. I have not seen that yet, but we're getting awfully close, awfully close in some locations. I wish everybody a wonderful day. Stay safe. Enjoy the big cool down here in the middle part of the country and also in the Northeast. It won't last long because it's still August, so we're going to heat right back up later in this week. Take care. Several additional feet of snow is expected by Monday morning. We have a powerhouse typhoon which has developed off in the Pacific Ocean. A big shakaru to many of you. This is especially true in regards to what's going to be going on in Alaska. We have parts of the world that are so hot right now. Temperatures are expected to go into the low 130s. Hey, we have a special guest on our show. Uh, what is your name? A heat wave that's going to be headed to the Alot area. We're going to have to wait before we get into the next excitement. We're going from one extreme to the next extreme. 27.1 parametric pressure. Feet of snow are falling in Japan. Oh my gosh. That's a time of celebration. Just Google weather with enthusiasm and they're all going to come up.